It's only November and we've already seen several months of devastating fires across Australia and exceptionally hot conditions through central and western Australia. And while our thoughts are very much with all the people that have been directly affected by the current and recent bushfire activity, many people have asked us what's driving this weather and when will the pattern break. So I'm joined by climatologist Andrew Watkins to talk us through exactly what's going on. So Andrew, what is going on? Thanks, Andrea. Look, we've certainly seen a very hot and a very warm year to date. In terms of rainfall, in actual fact, this is the map for January to October. It's actually been the second driest January to October period on record, second only to the Federation drought of 1902. And unfortunately, that's been compounded by the fact that we've had a very warm year to date. In actual fact, the January to October period has been the warmest or the hottest January to October period on record. And of course, when we have no rain and really hot conditions, we see the vegetation, the landscape dry out, which is what we've seen this year. So what's actually driving these conditions? Well, at the moment, we have two key patterns that are driving the conditions. The first one that's affecting much of the world at the moment is the Indian Ocean Dipole, a positive Indian Ocean Dipole. And that happens when we get warmer than usual water off Africa and cooler than usual water off Indonesia. And the effect of that is to move the weather patterns across towards Africa and we get less moisture off the northwest of Australia. This typically brings about uh, high pressure systems over central Australia and the southeast, which tends to keep the fronts further south and also keeps the clouds away as well. So when would a typical positive Indian Ocean dipole pattern break down? Well, the idea is typically broken down when the monsoon sets in and we get changes in the winds off Indonesia. Now, this year, unfortunately, the monsoon has been very sluggish moving away from India. In actual fact, it's been the, the latest retreat from India on record. So we aren't expecting the monsoon to move into the southern hemisphere for an extra couple of weeks at least. And that would mean that the IOD is likely to break down, well, probably not until late December or even into January which is obviously not what we want to hear. It's also not the only climate driver that's impacting the weather at the moment. So tell us about the other driver. Well, the other main climate driver at the moment is the Southern Annular Mode, otherwise known as SAM. What happens when we have a negative SAM event, as we have right now, is that our weather systems tend to be further north. Now that brings more westerly winds into Tasmania and sometimes into Southern Victoria, but it also leads to more dry, hot winds coming across the, in across the inland and into Eastern Australia as well. And if we think about it, that in the context of what we've seen over the last few weeks, the, particularly the Western Tasmania has been cool and quite wet uh, compared to other parts of the country. And we've had the real heat building up across central and west. And then those westerly winds have been driving that all the way towards the east coast, resulting in incredibly hot temperatures there. And we're now even heading towards heat wave conditions through parts of New South Wales and Queensland. So when does a SAM normally break down? Well, typically a negative SAM pattern only lasts a couple of weeks, but this one is exceptionally strong and we're not really expecting to see that breakdown for the rest of November and probably into early December at least. So probably not until mid-December. So what we can expect weather-wise then is a continuation of the sorts of patterns that we've been seeing with the heat building up across the north of the country and then being brought across towards the east uh, with these cold fronts that are moving through. So really we're likely to see some some cooler days, but some really hot days uh, expected to continue. And when we have that really hot, dry air combining with the very dry vegetation and strong gusty winds, that's when we see those dangerous fire weather days. So really, until we see this patterns change, we're likely to continue to see those, aren't we? Yes, we certainly are. And if we look at the outlook ahead for the next couple of months or through the summer, that's reflected in the outlook that we have the patterns are likely to stay uh, quite warm throughout the summer and certainly we're seeing very high odds of above average daytime temperatures right through the summer. So really, we've still got a very long summer ahead of us um, and more bad fire weather days likely. Know that we're here with you to keep you informed and provide all the forecast and warning information to help keep you safe.